In this lesson I'm going to show you how to make this simple stone set stacker ring with a cabochon ruby set in it. It's one in a series of lessons online that you can check out showing you various ways of making shape settings for stacker rings. Check out the link in the course description. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to make a four claw setting for this cabochon ruby that's eight millimeters by six millimeters and then I'll solder it to this uh, round wire ring and if you want to know how to make this then go to uh, the website jewellerytrainingsolutions.com.au and look under free lessons I've added the lesson on making the ring and also rolling the strip from 1.5 mil round wire so with the strip you're not going to need all this it's just uh, I'm going to make a few stacker rings with different shaped stones so I've rolled out enough to do them all so just flatten the end you don't need any special equipment to make these settings just your pliers so clamp the very end in your round nose pliers and just push the wire around and stop when you get around about halfway into making a complete circle and then just do a check on whether you got the right shape for the end of the oval so we're going to start um, start the long part or the uh, gradual curve of the oval there now so we won't be curving it as much so I'll clamp it closer to where it's straight and just pull the wire around or the strip around very carefully don't wrap it too tight on your pliers and check again you want the stone to sit on top and you want to be able to hide the setting underneath so you shouldn't be able to see it I'll just stop there check again when you look directly down the silver needs to be hidden so you can see that I need to just squeeze it in a little bit more so if you make it too big the claws are going to be too far out and it's going to be harder to set so I'll just tighten it up and try again and there's an overlap there so we can take a little bit more out when we cut it if I need to tighten it up anymore but that's looking pretty good now now if you're not too sure then make it smaller than you think because you can tap it up and stretch it a little bit later on so what I'll do now is I'm going to cut uh, just slightly away from the the end there so I'll use my pen knife just to make a mark there and the 4-0 blade and cut setting from the strip knife edge needle file or a barrette needle file I'll just tidy the end up to make sure that it's nice and flat so that it'll meet up with the other end perfectly so to do that clamp it in your pliers use a pair of chain nose pliers just overlap it So, and then very carefully just angle your round nose pliers just at the joint there and just squeeze it till the two ends come together. There's a bit of a step there so you just need to level it up, make sure there's enough tension in that joint and there's no gaps at all. So it might not be a perfect oval but we know it's the right size and we can just tidy it up later on. So I'll solder that with hard solder now. So I'll flux the joint and flux the little snippet of solder that I've cut off. Now I've annealed the strip before I started working on it. If I hadn't annealed it then when I start heating it up 
the metal will start moving around and the joints could open. So make sure that the strip is annealed first and melt the solder. And when it's molten, you should be able to pick it up with your solder pick. Now I can place that on the joint when it gets to the right temperature. So it's just going red now. Pop it on the joint. Now when you first start soldering you place your solder on the joint and then heat it up and let it run. But once you get used to soldering it's a lot quicker to uh, ball the solder and then place it when you're ready. So now I'll pickle that. Okay I'll get rid of the excess solder. I'll just use my half round needle file to get inside and take any off from the outside as well. And you can just do another check to make sure that it's the right size. Now it can be a fraction smaller which this is but if it's any bigger then you need to just cut it open and take a little piece out. So that is too small which is fine for me because I'm going to stretch it up a little bit. Now you can use any stake that fits inside. Uh, so I've just got one of my doming punches that I'll use. If the stake you're using is a bit smaller than that and it's uh, running quite free, it doesn't really matter. It'll still work. So just tap around, move the stake around as you go. And you'll be making this into a perfect round setting. You'll also see that when you hammer the setting, the contact points are on the edge and not in the middle because the, the way you bend the, the uh, strip it forms a little bit of a curve on the strip, so the edges are just slightly raised. So with the hammer you're going to make it perfectly flat. So don't use a mallet, it must be a steel hammer. And this one I'm using is a chasing hammer. So I measured the stone earlier and it's 8 by 6 so the average of 8 by 6 is 7 so if this is a 7 mil diameter round setting it'll be perfect because I can um, then shape it to make the oval shape the right size. So I need to still work on it a little bit more, stretch it out a bit to get to that size. So I'll just keep keep going, it will stretch and if you want to stretch it more efficiently then try and find a stake that's a fraction bigger. So now the setting is 7mm round and before I do anything else I'm going to anneal this. I'm going to be very careful though not to take it too far above the cherry red uh, temperature because that joint, there's tension in that joint and it could open out. And the reason I'm annealing it is to relax the metal so that when I solder a claw on later it's not going to open out. So I'm just using a uh, neutral flame so as much oxygen as air and just very very carefully watching the colour change. So it's just gone cherry red now so I'll stop it and pickle it. Okay, I'll just clean it up a little bit now and um, and I'll shape it. So now I'll squeeze this into the oval shape to match the stone. I need to make sure that the joint of the setting is going to line up with a claw that I'll put on. So it needs to be slightly away from the long part of the oval or between the long part of the oval and the short part of the oval. So I've just got to make sure that my pliers, I'm going to use my parallel pliers. or position properly so I've just put a little notch there where the claw will be just turn it a fraction to get it right and then just squeeze setting and stop check that it matches the size of the stone it can be a fraction smaller so I've got seven and a half there And I've 
got just just over six, close to six now. So I just need to squeeze it a little bit more. And more importantly, if you just put the stone on top, and again, just check by looking directly down to make sure that you can't see the setting. I think that looks pretty good. I'll check with the the gauge to see what we've got. Okay, we've got just over seven and a half by just over six. Do a little bit more, and I'll leave it at that. So it's really important to get the claws in the right position, and the best way to mark them out is to find the longest point of the oval and the shortest point and then we can uh, make sure that we mark up between those points. So if you get your vernier gauge and just hold the setting perfectly square in the jaws like that and then just give it a little bit of a, a wobble in there enough to leave a little impression on the end of the setting. So that, that does the longest point of the oval and then for the shortest point again you should be able to see when it's perfectly square to the gauge and squeeze it quite tight on there you're not going to change the shape of it now and then just rub it up and down a little bit and we should have a little impression left behind on both sides. So now just mark between those. So I'll just uh, make those markings more distinct and you should be able to just mark the between points by eye. If it doesn't look right or you're just not too sure about the spacing just set your dividers and just make sure that you've got equal measurements from the shortest points and the longest points to where the claws will go. Okay that looks that looks fine to me so what I'll do now is I'll just cut those markings in and I'll just use my 4 saw blade and I'm going to cut down the setting keeping it dead square now my fingers are used to doing this kind of work but uh, you may want to hold your work in parallel pliers to do this So I've only cut into the thickness of these um, metal around about a quarter in there, so not a lot. I'll go over that cut with a three square needle file and this will just open the cut out a little bit and I'll deepen it to around about halfway into the thickness. Okay, you can now use a burr to groove the cuts out to fit the one millimeter round wire and if you were going to use a burr I'd be using a tapered burr like this and uh, this is a one mil tapered burr so that would be the right size but I'll do it the safe way and stick with my needle file so I'll just go over what I've just done with a square needle file and this just widens the um, groove out a little bit more. So if you were going to use a burr, I'll just show you how this works. So just run it in there along. The thing is, if you're not used to 
doing fine work like this with burrs then it can take off um, pick up traction from the edge of the groove and damage the setting so um, as you can see the the groove that's cut out already will do the job so don't stress too much if you haven't got this burr or you're not used to doing this kind of work I'll just open it a little bit more with this anyway So make sure that the grooves are around about halfway into the thickness of the setting and just try your wires to make sure that they fit in quite comfortably into the grooves there. So now I'm going to make a two U-shape um, piece of wire to fit into the grooves. Now uh, you can actually cross them over and go from that one to that one and then over uh, the other way as well and that's how I did the um, the round fasted stone so you can imagine that when it was put together had a cross going that way and that way but you have to make one longer than the other so that you can do solder them in one go this time I'm gonna go make the u-shape to fit across this way so let's see how we go so Make a bit of a judgment on the distance there and make sure that the uh, the wires match up so they don't, they're not off angle. And just check the distance there, see if it fits in. Okay, so I've clicked it in and it holds okay, but it's just pulling at this end here so the u-shape is a little bit too tight and just see a gap there so if I just open that out a little bit should fit a bit more comfortably into the groove okay I'll snip it off and then we'll have a look and you can actually just do these one at a time but um, I like to try and minimize the solder operations as much as possible when I'm putting jewellery together. So let's just see if we can click this in. A little bit too tight. And just make sure that the top of the setting is flat and the top of the setting is going to be the part where the ends of the wires come up like that so that's that's obviously the bottom of the setting so we need about two mil at least two mil of claw above the top of the bezel there so I might just push it up a bit more just to be on the safe side it's opening out a bit more as well Okay, so that's holding in place and I've got enough claw hanging out there. So now I'll do the, the other. And if you're not managing to get the two pieces on before you solder it, then there's nothing wrong with just soldering that now and then working on the other bits once it's soldered. Okay, so that's ready for soldering. Okay, I've got my bits of solder ready there. I'll melt them and pick them up as I go. And I'm going to stick with the hard solder for this. Um, although there's only one more solder operation to do 
So you can use medium. Okay, pickle that. I've got some uh, 600 grit emery paper I've just wrapped around my three square needle file and I'll just tidy up around the solder joints. And I try and cross the direction of the emery as well. Make sure I get rid of all the lines. So just make sure that you've got um, a good 2mm of claw from the top of the bezel to the top of the claw. This will allow for a, um, a high dome cabochon. This is quite a low dome so 2mm is plenty. I'll be filing it down a fraction later on. Now I'm going to attach the uh, shank to the setting or the setting to the shank and to do that I'm going to leave all this in place. What that does is it uh, adds a little bit of security for the claws as I do the next solder job. Um, if I do sweat one of the joints here, it'll be held on the other side by the other solder joints. So we won't cut these off till later on. So first thing to do is there's a couple of ways of attaching the shank to the setting. You can attach the shank to the setting or the setting to the shank. So I know that doesn't make sense, but uh, that was... Um, that was attached by opening the joint of the ring up, cutting it open and putting the setting in. This time I'm going to uh, put a groove in the setting and hopefully lock the ring into the setting. Uh, so ideally we want it to hold firm as we do this, the solder job so we're not having to um, move it around during the solder operation. So let's see how we go. First thing we're going to do is uh, cut at the bottom of the setting right in the middle between the claws there. So cut around about halfway in on one side and then the other. And again, use your three square needle file and file into the cut. And I'm holding it with my fingers and I do advise that you do the same rather than holding with pliers. You, there's now a weak point in the setting just here so if you squeeze it too hard with a tool you could collapse the setting. Very frustrating. So just file along. This opens the groove out. And you can see we need to work on the shape of that uh, with go with the square needle file. This will open it out a little bit. Again, if you're experienced with burrs, just go straight to them and start burring the shape out. So have a look through your collection of ball burrs and find one that's around about 1.4 to 1.5 round and. get the burr going pretty fast to start with and then start burring out the groove very carefully making sure you don't lean it over one way or the other. It started to move over to one side you can just see there it's it's moved over this side so this being a smaller burr than the profile of the ring I can just move it back over to where it needs to go and now I'm going to just have a look, see how it fits in there. So that actually fits really comfortably in there. Although I don't think it'll stick whilst I'm soldering. So I'm not going to open it up any more than that. I will go deeper though in a minute. Do the same on the other side. And because of the ring shape, the curve of the ring, you need to fire a groove a little bit more on the inside than the outside so I'm just shaping the 
the burr to go inside and take more off this inside edge here. The same on the other side. And I need to go deeper so that the ring is pretty much buried into the setting. side on so we want to see the bottom of the ring there we want that to really be inside the setting so we're going to go a little bit further remember it is getting quite weak there so be really careful Try that now. Let's see if it'll hold itself. Yeah, that should hold well some soldering. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper. So the deeper you go, the more grippy it'll get. But there again, it does get a little bit risky as well. to hold in place and I think that will work. Okay I'll set it up for soldering. Before I do that I'll just give you a little tip. I, from the burring there's like a little bit of swath there or flashing that's uh, just pulled up and if I solder that the solder will run around it and it's going to be really difficult to get rid of later on so I'm just going to run my round needle file just over the outside edge just to get rid of it. That's all it takes. It's always a good idea to put the flux on the groove first and then we'll put it on the setting uh, on the ring. And the ring has been handled quite a lot so it's a little bit greasy so it's always a good idea to just rub a little bit of emery paper over it to clean it up. That'll take the flux and the solder now. The solder joint on the ring is going to be at the bottom. If you add that at the top where the setting is going to go, if there's any tension in that ring, it's going to open the joint out. So I'm just going to add the flux on top as well there. To, I've got a little bit of uh, medium solder I'm using there. Um, I do like to avoid using easy solder if I can. It just gives me another option later on if I want to add anything to the design or if there's any repair work in the future to do, you have got the easy solder option. So I'm now looking at it uh, that way to make sure that it's level. I know that it's lined up um, as in this way because, uh, because of the grooves. It's not moved. Obviously it's not moved out of kilter that way, but uh, this way I need to make sure it forms a perfect letter T with the top of the setting and the shank going down. So I'll keep watching the, the joint, making sure that it does, once the flux settles down, just make sure that it does settle into the right position. So that's looking square now. And now I'll just pick up my solder and very carefully place it right on the joint. Now I didn't get the heat distribution right there, so it's just run onto the setting and not the shank. So now I've just directed the heat onto the shank and it's gone into the setting, yeah, into the joint okay. It's always a good idea once you've done one side to just have a look and just make sure it's okay and you can probably see that that it's slightly off angle so if I'd have soldered the other side it'd be very difficult to make the correction so now I just need to just push down this side here when I heat it up to get it to settle straight so 
take it back up to solar temperature. Okay, the joint sweat, and I've just moved it a fraction. So that was only about a millimetre, but it would be enough to annoy me later on. Okay, now I can finish it off. Okay, all the solving is done now, so I'll pickle that and then we can uh, chop off the U bend on the setting and clean it up and then set the stone, of course. Okay, now I'll use my end cutters to snip off the bottom wire. Just level the claws and start tidying it off. If you were going to be setting a transparent stone that you'd be able to see through then it's a good idea to remove that bar uh, from inside the setting but uh, in this case I'm going to leave it in. So the ring's finished and uh, just need to set the stone now. A very simple task for something like this and uh, we can do it just with a half round needle file. So just make sure that the um, stone is looking a bit too big for the setting. It should, if you could balance it on the claws, um, you should see that it would cover around about a third of the top of the claws. So what we need to do is just file out a groove on the inside of the claws and a half round needle file is the perfect shape for this. So just put your file in with the flat side down and just tilt it slightly upward. You want to try and avoid uh, cutting onto the top of the bezel there. You get it as close down to the bottom of the claw as possible. File in around about a third of the thickness. Do that for each one. Okay, we'll have a look at that now. Before I do, I'll just um, you'll see again that there's a little bit of flash in there at the side of the claw, so we'll just um, take that off now. It'd be tricky to get to later on. And if you file too much of a groove into the claws, then the stone could rattle around in there. So we want we want it nice and tight. And uh, I'll just get my chain nose pliers out just to pull out two of the claw slightly and let's see if it will go in. It's a tricky stone to keep hold of. Need to file a little bit more into the claws. Okay, so that's going in, but you can see it just needs a bit more filing around to so that the uh, very edge of the stone sits in properly. I'll 
I'll give you a chance to have a look at the shape of the cuts I put in there. And we'll just try the stone again. So that's sat nicely onto the setting, but because the bottom of the setting is slightly curved as well or domed, then I'm going to have to just um, burr a groove on the inside edge of the uh, bezel there so it sits more comfortably down. A ball burr. Um, like the one that we used before to make the groove in the setting will do the job for you. Now, if your cabochon is dead flat, then you don't need to do this. Okay, that's a lot more comfortable in the setting now, so I'll push the claws in onto the uh, stone and lock it in place. In order to do that I'm just going to use my, um, I've got a brass pusher which is ideal for working round stones and just push the claw tip onto the stone making sure I push opposites in case it shifts the stone out. So that, you'll find that once you've done that the stone is firmly in place but there's a good chance that the claws will catch, so I'll show you how I eliminate that. First of all, with a the half round needle file, just file at a slight angle upward without contacting the stone in case you scratch it. So you see a very slight gap there between the claw tip and the stone and that's what's going to catch on clothing. So to get rid of that, this is a tool you can make yourself, it's just a V-shape cut into a steel pusher. Now being a jeweller you need to learn how to make lots of different tools for different tasks uh, because there's no option to buy certain things so you have to know how to modify tools as well. So there is a lesson on making this uh, and many other setting tools. So just uh, cut the um, the tool over the claw and just pull it back slightly from the edge of the claw. And then with a wobble and a push, you'll be able to just mush the metal into that gap. And you, you really have to think of precious metals more like putty or clay than of something rigid and firm because you can move the metal around and make it um, mould into places like that. So that's now um, ready and just needs a bit of a polish so that it won't catch on clothing that one. So I'll work on the opposite one. And again just a little bit pulled back from the edge and you're just burnishing the metal into the gap there. Okay, that's it. I'll give it a polish and then we'll take a look. And there we have it, set, polished and finished. Hope you enjoyed.